for having me. It's delightful to be back with you. Thanks for staying up late to speak to us on the west coast of the United States. So half percent cut. What do you make of it? Well, it's interesting. You know, there was a lot of contention coming into this. Would they cut it all? Would it be 25 percent or 25 base points, 50 basis points? You know, it's very interesting to me that Powell went big. He swung for the fences, came out with 50 and the markets kind of yawned. So it's very interesting. I think the carry through tomorrow is where you're really going to want to focus. You've been a critic of the Fed over the past few months. Just remind us what has been your criticism. And do you think they're finally now addressing some of those criticisms? You know, it's interesting. Thank you for remembering that. I've been critical of the Fed for a long time. I think they they missed this crisis in formation. I've been very harsh on them because they got transitory wrong. They waited too long to take action. And now, of course, they've waited again too long to assess what's happening around them. So, you know, Chairman Powell is not stupid. He's clearly a very intelligent guy, but I think he suffers from the fact that he doesn't know how real money, meaning Wall Street and global markets, actually perceive his actions. So today, I think he sounded uncertain. I don't think he was quite convinced that 50 was the way to go based on how he, you know, his body language and the way I read his text during the announcement. So Again, long story short on this one, I think traders had a quick field day up and down. Now they're going to get serious in the next couple of days and figure out what this actually means for the markets. They benched him. Well, let's look at what happens next, because, of course, he was asked about that. And we also got the so-called dot plot last night where Fed policymakers give their projections for various things, including interest rates over the next couple of years. And in simple terms, they're predicting quite a lot of rate cuts over the next few months. Let's have a listen to Jay Powell now. This is what he had to say about the future direction of interest rates. If the economy evolves as expected, the median participant projects that the appropriate level of the federal funds rate will be 4.4 percent at the end of this year and 3.4 percent at the end of 2025. These median projections are lower than in June, consistent with the projections for lower inflation and higher unemployment, as well as the changed balance of risks. So interest rates are going to come down, it would seem. What does that mean for the economy? What does it mean for our investment strategy, Keith? Because that's what your clients are going to be asking you. Well, they're already asking us that. And, you know, what we're telling them is, you know, the stuff that you want to be thinking about are the companies that are going to be there when you need them, despite what the Fed thinks. The thing that troubles me about Chairman Powell's announcements with regard to investing is he's saying if the data does this, if the data does that, that's looking in the rear rearward mirror. He's already telling you he's going to be looking backwards when the data changes. What I would want to hear from a chairman who is proactive is, OK, we are going to do X, Y and Z and expect PDQ. You didn't get that. But CEOs have got to place those bets now. They've got billions of dollars on the line. Investors should be looking to the CEOs and the products and the growth and the must have services, AI in particular, tech in particular, healthcare in particular, because those are the things the world can't live without. A couple of things before we let you go, Keith. I was opening your, oh, looking on X on your uh, Five with Fits today, your, your daily newsletter, and you start off with, if the Federal Reserve was a band, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> go on. <laughs> well, thank you for reading. So if the Federal Reserve were a band, they would have a tour shirt that we printed up years ago that said, you know, attention to deficit orders, the 2% problem. Today, I think we've got to add an additional song to that, Too Little Too Late. But again, you know, we were just having fun. Chairman Powell is an exceptionally intelligent individual. I just simply don't agree with where he is. He's too late to the party. He's looking in the rearview mirror. As an investor, you got to focus on companies that are looking down the road and figure out how you get there with them. So what kind of companies are you buying at the moment? Well, today, it's going to be anything that got sold off hard because that's where Wall Street's playing games. So it's the usual suspects in the big tech world. It's the NVIDIAs. It's the Apples. It's the Microsoft. I do think it's very telling, by the way, that Apple really didn't take a hit today. That's one of the most broadly held stocks in the world. So the fact that that didn't sell off tells me traders can't game it, and it's the real deal. But inside defense, unfortunately, war, terrorism, and ugliness is a growth industry worldwide now, so we've got to be very careful there. But healthcare, that's going to be companies like AbbVie, for example, that are working in oncology, where we've got huge growth in cancer research combined with AI that are going to contribute for decades of revenue to come. 
Let's talk about debt if we can for a second. You've got Ray Dalio speaking this week saying he's concerned about levels of debt in the United States. I'm going to read out or paraphrase a, a question we've had from one of our listeners, Arno, this morning, who is sceptical about the conventional monetary system. He says, so 50 basis points it is. Let the recession officially begin and the money printer go on. Brr. Could you ask the economists for their thoughts on the issue of what he calls mathematically unrepayable debt? A quick word on that, Keith, debt. Well, you know, as you know, I've lived for much of my adult life in Japan as well as the United States. And there, you know, debt is a national sport. And the reason that's the case and they can survive with very high unsustainable rates, even though mathematically they are impossible, to your listener's point, they are absolutely impossible, is because they've got a savings system and an investment system that predicate on national survival. So I think in the United States, as obscene as these debt levels are, politicians are still playing kick the can down the road, but they're also going to engineer some form within the next few years of reinvesting in what they're going to call some American bonds or savings bonds or you know some form of, of that, because that's really a, a go past card that you get for free if you can convince investors or can create a national savings program that sustains your own debts. Not a very good outlook, but again, I'm going to focus on the companies not what is going to happen behind the scenes with regard to economists who arguably contribute to this problem, Richard. I'm going to finish with another line from your Five with Fritz this morning, which is about a company that's not doing well, a company that's just gone bankrupt. I'll ask you about Tupperware in a second, but first of all, I hope you can hear this down the line in Seattle. Our producers have dug this out, a 1980 commercial for Tupperware. Meats keep meatier, beets keep beatier, chips keep chippier, dips keep dippier. Tupperware freshness, that's our promise. Look at all the ways we keep it. Come to a Tupperware party and see all the new ways you can lock in freshness. I hope, you, I hope you could hear that because it's a bit of fun uh, for a Thursday morning with us. Tupperware's gone bust, though, Keith. Unbelievable. But yet this is another classic, uh, iconic company. I mean, that I remember that commercial, actually, funny enough. You know, here's a deal where, you know, everybody's seen the economy got terrible. The reality is management made bad decisions and couldn't keep up. So it strikes me as a lot like Kodak or Eastern Airlines or People Express or even Intel recently, where the market shifted out from under them. They didn't compensate. And now you've got a great name that's going to vanish into the financial graveyard. Always good talking to you, Keith. Really appreciate you staying up late to speak to us in Seattle on such a busy day for you. I know you're doing the rounds on the media. Thanks for including us. Keith Fitzgerald there of the Fitzgerald Group joining us live. Dubai Eye 103.8 traffic. Right then, roads are busy in all the U.